Let's worship him. Well, I don't think you heard me. I said, let's worship him. Let's worship him. Forever to worship him. I don't know about you, but I am persuaded. Lord, to love you. I have been changed to bless his name. You all just give me a minute to get myself together. Forever to worship thee. God, we thank you. Oh, let's thank God for the choir today. Let's thank God for the musicians today. For the choir director today. For you being in the house of God today. I am extra excited and extra happy to be here. Can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, okay to your pastor in his absence, an awesome man of God. And for him to allow this rookie to come into his house today, I am forever grateful. I had the privilege of being at camp meeting last week. How many of you made it to camp meeting? Did you happen to make it out Monday I believe it was Monday morning about 6.30. You know, that's early to hear the word of the Lord, but Pastor Washington preached Monday morning. He talked about the help. I don't know if you've heard that sermon, but you may want to buy that one. I told him when he said he wasn't going to be here today, I said, we can just play that. You don't need me. Pastor Washington has always been my pastor. <laughs> you all better keep treating him right or I have to snatch him away from you. <laughs> uh, I like to hear that. I like to hear that. Good to see so many familiar faces in the audience, in the choir. I ask that you Pray for me as we lift up the name of Jesus today. Before I talk to you, let us talk to God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Hide me behind the shadow of the cross. Let Jesus and Jesus alone be seen, be known be heard. Any, if any good is done today, we'll be careful to give you the praise, honor, and glory. Now forgive me of my sin. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever been in a situation that you felt there was no way out? Have you ever had a problem that you thought would never be fixed? I'm sure if we took a poll around the audience today, somebody would answer yes to that question. Then you came to the realization that in order for your problem to get fixed, you need to see Jesus. The Spirit leads you to understand that he's the only one that can fix your situation. So you start your journey to get to Jesus. You hear that he's in town and you want to get to him. 
You go to one place and he's no longer there. And then you move to the next and you've just missed him. Finally, you hear that Jesus is at the church and you make your way there only to get to the door and the crowd is too big and you can't get in. Or people see you coming and since you don't look like them, they put up a roadblock in front of you and try to keep you from coming in. But all you know that you've come to see Jesus to fix your situation. And you're not leaving until you get to see him. There's a familiar story in the Bible found in the book of Mark. If you have your Bibles, turn with me there quickly. Mark chapter 5, starting at verse 21. Mark chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible says, Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Verse 25. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if, I, if only I may touch his clothes, I could be made well. I might be made well. I shall be made well. And then verse 29 says, immediately, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you And you say, who touched me? 32 says, and he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her in verse 34, daughter, your faith. Daughter, your faith. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. The Bible says a certain woman. She doesn't have a name, but we know that she had been sick for 12 years. No doctor in town was able to cure her case. She spent all of her money. And her situation was not changing. Her HMO had run out. In fact, she might have needed some Obamacare. But she had gone to every doctor in town. I I could imagine the church folk try to tell her to drink this herb and to, to rub this on you to get your situation fixed. Then something came over her to go and see a man named Jesus. For surely he could and would heal her of her disease. You see, earlier in chapter 5, Jesus had just healed the demoniac. And she may have known this man and she saw how his situation had changed. He was no longer possessed by demons. So she hears that Jesus is by the sea, and she goes there to meet him, but the crowd is too big. Strike one. Mm -hmm. Then she followed him to Levi Matthew's house, 
for surely he would see her or, or maybe somebody with him would allow her to get close to Jesus so that he could lay hands on her and she would be made whole. But then Jairus interrupts the situation and he comes in and asks Jesus to go and heal his daughter. Strike two. Another opportunity had passed. So now the crowd is thick and Jesus is moving slowly through the crowd. In fact, the commentary tells us that while he's moving through that crowd, he's touching and healing people. This woman could not get close to Jesus. She's trying and trying. She has two strikes on her already. If she doesn't get to him again, three strikes, she's out. But something comes over her. She thought within herself, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be made whole. And you know how the story goes. She, Jesus was passing by, and, and she reached out and just nipped the hem of his garment. And the Bible says immediately she was healed. Immediately she was healed. In some translations of the Bible, it calls the story the woman with the issue of blood. She just didn't have a problem with blood. She had an issue. And the only way for her issue to be fixed was to go and see Jesus. Some of us have some problems, and some of us have some issues. In fact, she just had an issue, but some of us have issues. And in order for our issue or issues to be fixed, we have to go and see Jesus. See, when, when, when you get a cold, you can take vitamin C and get your problem fixed. But when you get pneumonia, you got to go to the doctor and get your issue fixed. When your car runs out of gas on the highway, you have a problem, but you can call AAA or you can maybe walk a few miles and get your problem fixed. But when the computer goes out in your car, for some of y'all with cars with computers, you have an issue. And in order for your issue to be fixed, you have to take that car to the manufacturer and let him fix it for you. So let's look at some things in this story to help us understand that no matter what our situation may be, if we press on, Jesus will take care of it. The first thing, don't let anyone or anything stop you from getting to Jesus. This lady was sick for 12 years. She spent all her money on her doctors, but her situation only seemed to get worse. She almost gave up, but she realized that she couldn't, that she could only get help from Jesus. I don't know if there's anybody here today that is in a bad situation. And you've tried what you thought was everything, and you can't see your way out. Do like the woman in this story. Go and find Jesus. I'm sure when she got in the crowd, there may have been people around her to discourage her not to bother Jesus. Because according to the law, she was unclean. And if Jesus touched her, he would be unclean too. You are in your situation and some church folk won't help you because they may think by you touching them or they touching you, they will become unclean. But don't get discouraged by that. Just keep searching for Jesus. It always amazes me Maybe not at this church, but in some churches, how we don't won't allow certain people in the church. We don't allow. 
First of all, it's not my church. <laughs> it's God's church. I'm sure if, you, if you're on Facebook, like I am, I saw a picture of a church. And outside the church, there was a sign. It said, no low-cut dresses, no sagging jeans, no um, tight-fitting pants, no hats. And if you can't comply to this, you cannot come in here. And the comments that were made on that picture, some folks said, yeah, you shouldn't come in the church looking like that. Now, I grew up in this church. And they always told me, Ed, that this church is a hospital for sin-sick sinners. I've never seen a sign on a hospital that said, if you're bleeding, if you're sick, if you have a disease, you cannot come in here. If this is the place where I can get my sin-sick soul saved, who are you? You or you to tell me I can't come in here. See, some of us are, are like the Pharisees in Jesus' day. We, we're more concerned about the image of the church than we are about spreading the gospel. We're so busy trying to hold up the standards that we forget about lifting up the Savior. Because my Bible, Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We only want to help people on our terms, and, and we want to, them to clean up before they come into church. So if you're that person today, and, and somehow you've gotten in the door, thank God you didn't let anybody turn you around. So don't let anybody keep you from getting to Jesus. The second point is just bumping into Jesus or touching his clothes will not heal you. The crowd was thick. You all excuse me for a second. told me I could be comfortable. <laughs> I'm taking orders. Just bumping into Jesus or touching his clothes will not heal you. The crowd was thick, and, and when the woman touched Jesus, he turned around and asked, who touched me? Now, now the commentary says that Peter spoke up. Yeah. Peter always had something to say. <laughs> yeah, that's my man, Peter. <laughs> Peter, Peter said, now, Lord, you see the crowd pressing you on every side, and, and you want to know who touched you? Now, just think, if, if the healing of this woman was in the touch, then everybody that bumped into Jesus or brushed up against him would have been healed. There are many of us who come to church week after week, bumping into Jesus and not being healed or our situations are not changing. We hear sermon after sermon. We, we sing song after song. We get our praise on and yet and still our situations stay the same. So touching or bumping into Jesus is not enough to heal you. So what is it? Elder Johnson, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the Bible says that it was her faith yes. that made her well. Yes. Now, now, when you we read through the Bible and, and you watch how Jesus healed people, Jesus either spoke to them or he touched them. Even sometimes he healed them kind of unconventionally. For that one man, he, he, he spit, spat, he spit in the, on the ground, picked up the dirt and the clay and, and rubbed it on his eyes. 
Woo, that was, woo. <laughs> but it was the woman's faith that brought healing to her. And sometimes it could be other people's faith that gets you well. You, you remember the story of, uh, of the four friends that brought the man on the mat to Jesus? And, and, and they wanted him to be healed that they tore up the roof and, and lowered him down. And Jesus said, because of their faith, you're healed. Jesus said when she touched him that he felt power leave his body. Jesus knew what happened. It was faith that brought healing to her tortured body, not the touch. Jesus could have just let her off the hook and let her disappear in the crowd, but he called her out. She came and fell at his feet, and he told her that her faith had made her well. The reason he called her out was that he wanted her faith to be an example for others. He wanted her to go away with the lasting joy of knowing that she had been personally noticed and recognized by Jesus. He wanted her to know that the healing was not in the touch, but in her faith. Well, see, when Jesus takes care of your situation, he wants us, he wants you to let the world know what he's done for you. See, Jesus could have let her just slide through the crowd. Some of us, we, we come to prayer meeting or Believer's Night, and, and we talk about our testimony and, and the things that we need. But then when God does it for us, we get all silent. In fact, that is our greatest testimony. That is one of the powerful tools of evangelism. Telling others what Jesus has done for you. Not necessarily telling them how they need to eat. Not necessarily telling them how they need to dress. Not necessarily telling them what day they need to worship on. But I can learn how Jesus has, can, what he can do for me by hearing what he's done for you. So we got to let people know what God has done for us. So, so, so what is faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That, that sounds real good. But what is really faith? Faith believes without seeing. Faith knows the destination without necessarily knowing how I'm going to get there. But the Bible tells me that faith without works is dead. They're twins. They have to go together. You can't just say, I have faith. And just sit down. God, I know you're going to give me this job. I have faith. And you haven't filled out one application. <laughs> God, I, 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 I know you're going to um, help me get well. But you haven't seen one doctor. And you're not a doctor. <laughs> Faith without works is dead. She believed that she would be healed by touching Jesus, but guess what? If she never touched him, she would not have been healed. If you touch Jesus without believing that he's the one that can change your situation, your situation will stay the same. If you touch him without faith, there is no healing. If you touch him without faith, there is no financial breakthrough. If you touch him without faith, there is no resolution to that strained relationship. 
If you touch him without faith, there's no freedom to your bondage. If you touch him without faith, there is no salvation for your soul. So I've come by to let you know that if you have faith and you come to Jesus, whatever your situation is, it will change. Whatever your problem, whatever your sickness, if you believe, your situation will change. The problem with some of us and faith is the devil throws doubt. Because you really, you know the end, but you can't see it. So you're doubting if you're ever going to get to the end. We have to take the doubt out in order for our faith to work. Now, now just because you believe and just because you're touching Jesus does not mean that bad things won't happen. I, I, I used to be one of those who believed that if, if I just hold on to Jesus, everything will be all right. But that doesn't happen. I, I was one that believed if I prayed that my loved one would get well, they would get well. And, and, and when they died, you lose your mind. But, but the Bible says that no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Well, what does prosper mean? Prosper doesn't mean that you won't get hurt. Prosper doesn't mean that you won't die. It means that the weapon will not have final say over your life. So, so if I pray for someone to be healed and, and they're not healed and, and, and they die, the weapon will not prosper. Because my Bible says those that die in Christ will live again. So how do we get this kind of faith? The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 7, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how do I get that faith? I need to spend time in the Word. When you spend time in the Word and spend time talking to God, it increases your faith. When you hooked up with that significant other, you spent time talking to them. In fact, you tried to spend every waking moment talking to them. Oh, y'all act like I'm the only one. <laughs> you know good and well you couldn't wait to drop her off at the dormitory so you could get to your phone so you could call her to talk all night. Oh, that was back in the day. Now you can text her all day. And you spend all of your minutes. That's why they had, that's why Verizon and Sprint had to come up with unlimited plans. Because y'all were spending so much time texting and, and talking. And the more you spend time, the more you understand the person. And the more the person gets to understand you. And, and, and you get together. Well, the more you spend time with Jesus. And the more you get to know him and understand that he is the one that can change your situation. Jesus is coming back soon, and he's coming back for the faithful. He's coming back for those who believe in him. The Bible tells me that if I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I will be saved. The gospel is very simple. Believe 
on Jesus and I'll be saved. So it was more than just a touch. It was the touch with faith. Many have put their faith in things and they let them down. We put our faith in our cars and they break down on us. We put our faith in our computers and they get viruses and stop working. We put our faith in our jobs and then we get laid off. We put our faith in banks and they foreclose on us. We put our faith in relationships and they fall apart. But if we put our faith in Jesus, he will never let us down. So today, reach out to him in faith and know that your situation will change. Not could change. Your situation will change. But you say, it, it, it doesn't look like it's going to happen for me. Well, we never know what it's going to look like. But if you, if you read comic books, anybody read comic books? Got superheroes? You like superheroes? If you read the comic book, your, your superhero starts out winning the fight. And around the middle of the comic book, the superhero gets injured. And, 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 and when you're a little kid reading these books, you, you kind of get sad and, and you get discouraged because your superhero is down. But then with the comic book, you can flip to the end. And you can find out that your hero made it out in the end, when I read the word of God, my superhero is Jesus. And, and, and he went through this earth, and he went through some peaks and valleys. And, and, and they thought they had him on the cross. And if you stop there, you can get discouraged. But you can flip to the end of the story. And know that the hero is coming back. So, Blaze, today I just want you to know to have faith in God. Because the story ends on a high note. Walter Hawkins said, don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Why? Because you know in the end you're going to win. It's not like watching the NBA playoffs when you don't know the outcome of the story. You don't know if LeBron is going to win the game. You don't know if Kobe is going to win the game. But in this situation, we already know that he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. There's somebody here today who has an issue. I don't know what your issue may be, but I've just stopped by to tell you that if you reach out and touch Jesus in faith, he will change your situation. I don't know who you are, where you are, but if you're here today and you want your situation changed, why don't you just stand to your feet? You want God to change your situation. Now, now, while you're standing, understand that if you have to believe that he'll change it. So whatever the situation is, by you standing, you know now that it's over. God has taken care. If you doubting, it will not happen. God will take care of your situation. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for letting us know that whatever situation we're in, if we reach out in faith, 
you will handle that situation, not in my time, but in your time. Now, God, we pause in this prayer right now. There's somebody here today who wants to give their life to Jesus. Not because of what they heard today, but because the Holy Spirit is working on their heart. So we're going to stop right now and allow that person to step out of the aisle and come to the front letting the world know that you've given your life to Jesus. If you're here today, just come. We'll wait for you. You're here today, just come. We're praying, church. How many of you believe he's able? Guess what? Because he won't. Father, bless us today. Give us faith to know that you will change our situation. Seal our commitments today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let every believer say, Amen.